and welcome to another video. Let's finish up working on that boomerang. In a past video I had talked about some of the difficulties with uh, getting parts open in here and uh, I noticed after they installed the 2021 version that this new open button was here. I haven't seen this before. And I wanted to give this a, a try on camera because this could be the potential fix for easily opening parts in, in this uh, program. So in X-Design, I come in, this is promising, 3D search, open in X-Design, and I wanna open up my Boomerang video version. And uh, we come to this screen. Maybe if I click the play button here. Okay, so this is opened up and it looks like we're in a viewer of some kind, but we're unable to edit the part. I really thought this was gonna open in X-Design. Uh, relations, options. That doesn't help us. Uh, I'm not seeing anywhere that this is sent to X-Design. Uh, maybe I'll try dragging and dropping, right? That does nothing either drag and drop your content anywhere, but I just drag and dropped and didn't open it. I'm in the right browser, so I don't know what's going on here. I really was thinking that they updated the UI so that this could be opened in X Design, but not really. I'm gonna try this one more time, and we're gonna try a different route. Boomerang, we come down here. So we've got this preview, relations open with, X shape, 3D markup, issue management, product explorer. And if I click on more apps, it just says your selection has been updated. I don't see a way in opening this in X-Design still, even though this has been created in X-Design. If somebody's from, from Dassault is watching this, just please drop me a line somehow, because this is so hard to open parts in, and I feel like I'm missing something because of how hard it is to open parts. So, all right, I'm going to go into another browser window and drag and drop from another browser but I really think this should be easy to open in X-Design. Uh, there's either something very wrong with my setup that I bought or, oh, is this not even? I was just able to drag and drop this before the video. All right, so I, I had to refresh the page and then all of a sudden drag and drop from another browser window has worked. That seems to be the only way that I know how to do this. There has to be an easier way. I haven't found it. Getting parts open in this thing is really difficult. Uh, but here we are, and uh, this is just sort of a lofted out boomerang missing the tips. I wanted to go through um, the, the lofting side of this. I hope this isn't gonna be too lengthy of a video, it might be. So I'm gonna just delete the uh, extra lofting surface in my mouse is frozen in this area. I'm not sure what's causing that. Both my mouse and my trackpad are not working all of a sudden. Well, my, my mouse is totally frozen. All right, well, if you can still hear me, I'm gonna do a control alt print screen reboot even if system entirely broken, and we'll see if this video can be salvaged. And I've got everything booted back up again. Uh, I'll head back into my common space and see if drag and drop is going to work. There we go. So I'm going to go through the tree and let's just delete my loft here. And now, um, so I've made these sketches and from the last video all I did was I edited every section and put a crossbar across the bottom and made sure that every sketch had the same amount of features. So from here, if we were to, uh, s let's do a, a solid loft on this. Um, you go to features, solid loft, right? And then you select sections to loft between. So I would consistently choose about the same section of arc over here. There we go, okay. I just have to make sure these arrows are pointed the right way. All right. 
So the lofting itself isn't that bad. Um, that should be up here though because this bottom part transitions up. There we go. There. There. Okay, that's our boomerang. Now, the one thing that I was very confused about is I have arc one as my first selection, of course, which is right down here. This arc one refers to the entire sketch, not just the arc individually. As you can see, the entire sketch is lofting. That is the same thing for control curves, right? I choose a guide curve. I choose this one sketch and it just says line one but it is uh, gonna be following the entire sketch. Um, that's a little bit confusing, but it also eliminates our ability to choose sections or certain elements of sketches, right? So let's, and, and I'll get into that, that difficulty that I'm seeing as well. So if I accept this loft, right, we get a nice little loft. Um, let's, eliminate that loft. Uh, let's go with surfaces. And let's say I want to do a surface loft. And I have all these sketches, but I just want to loft out the top surface, right? Um, if I choose arc one, arc two, and get these, yeah, that's it. And I accept that. Why? It gives me this bottom surface. Well, what if I just want to loft here, this edge, this edge and this edge, but not carry the bottom feature. There's no way to really not select the bottom to be included if it's in the sketch, right? If it's not construction geometry, it's part of the loft. And that seems to be uh, all that X design is capable of doing. So I originally, you know, surfaced this all the way through and and it, and it worked just fine. In fact, let me pull it up. Maybe I can show you. So you can see I did a surface loft here, but I omitted all of the horizontal crossbars. They're either construction geometry or not there. And that's how I was able to loft it without the bottom on it. And I've been trying really hard to get this corner to work. Uh, I tried getting a plane that would define between these three surfaces and do kind of an intermediate loft from here to here to here, that that does not work. In fact, this appears to be a sketch uh, that just a loft won't work, right? Um, if I demonstrate that, if I do a surface loft and I choose this sketch, lofting up to this sketch, you immediately get an error. <laughs> Let's try to see if we can select it from the graphics display. Yeah, so it doesn't even want to loft right now. Sometimes I've intermittently gotten it to be able to do kind of a loft, but it, it's not what I want and it's not what I can replicate in other programs. Uh, support has actually sent this model to to so R&D to try to see what's going on. And I haven't heard back from any progress that R&D has made but I just know that this can't loft right now, uh, no matter how I've tried. Uh, support finally got back to me a few weeks later and they had this actually rather ingenious way of doing a loft, um, say from this particular sketch, maybe this line in the sketch to these two sketch elements. And then they do this section to the next sketch element, the next section to the next, and kind of one at a time. So instead of trying to break it up like I did intermediately, which did not work here, they got something to go through with each individual um, curve and every individual um, guide curve for every individual loft, right? So it's a pretty intensive uh, process to get it done. Fill surface wouldn't work here either, but this is a problematic edge that it just seems like X design can't keep up with. Um, despite me being able to remake this in SOLIDWORKS, in Onshape, 
and even in FreeCAD, I could do uh, this kind of surfacing. Um, FreeCAD on a loft like this appears to generate what would look like a degenerative surface, but it can still thicken and do everything you'd want with the surface when I tested it out. So uh, there are some problems here uh, with this lofting. So I, I can't honestly say that this is as powerful of a modeler as other options out there uh, because I'm having so much trouble with this um, lofting. You can get it to work by doing a bunch of individual lofts, but it uh, that would take a lot of time and I think I'm just gonna give up on this model from here. Why don't we take a look at um, the competitive option because I wanted to show you what I meant by picking and choosing certain sketch elements to loft. So this is the closest competitive option to X-Design, apart from maybe something like NX on the cloud. Um, and I was able to make the boomerang in on shape and these, soft, these surfaces lofted without much issue. Uh, in fact, I didn't even use a guide curve because it, the edge has, when you loft, a loft starting normal to profile option. X-Design does not support that option, even though it's found in SOLIDWORKS. And uh, that has made it very difficult because if X-Design had that option, I probably could have get a lot, gotten a loft to work. Uh, so I think that's a big drawback with the uh, power of X-Design right now is that there's a lot less or more limited functionality than uh, other options like SOLIDWORKS or Onshape. Uh, if I look at this loft that I've done and I just double click to edit in the tree, you can tell that um, I've made four selections uh, in each loft, right? It shouldn't come to surprise that here, 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 and here, just these four sections uh, going all the way up and down. What is unique is uh, on my guide curve, this is one sketch, right? It comes all the way around and all the way back, but it was able to select the individual sketch entities that I wanted to use so I didn't have to use these four elements. Uh, that, that's not available in X-Design as of the recording of this video and it would be really handy if it was. You can also use the selection manager in SOLIDWORKS to do something like that. Uh, so it was a lot easier to make this in Onshape than it was in X-Design and although it's possible to get this kind of uh, surface in X Design, uh, it's just not worth it because <laughs> uh, it's, it's so time consuming to try to loft individually uh, between individual elements to produce this one surface, each loft with its own guide curve. That I'm just kind of giving up on that, and uh, I've got this model elsewhere. Well, I might as well just explain the difference between uh, on shape and X Design that I'm seeing for lofting. The big thing is uh, if I were to click, uh, you know, a sketch element in X Design, it selects the entire sketch. If I choose an element here, you can see we are just working with individual sketch elements. So it's a, it's a big difference in user interface. The power here is that I can uh, choose really whatever I want to and, and notice now I'm lofting <laughs> between two elements of the same sketch. So to avoid this, I actually whoop, click here and then I click this little arrow and I can add elements just like that, right? So now we're saying that all of these things is just the one profile that we loft from. And then I click out of that box click another thing and I click this arrow down and now I'm building, as you can see, elements in my next loft section. Oh, but of course I added these out of here. There we go. And there we have our loft. Uh, this is, you know, just a straight line loft and I don't even need a guide curve for, guide curve for this because I have the start profile condition here where I say normal to profile and you can adjust the magnitude quite easily, right? I can make that two and adjust the magnitude quite nicely. Now, um, I can say end profile condition, normal to profile, tangent profile, match tangent, match curvature, whatever. Um, 
So if I say normal to profile, right, that is a pretty healthy looking surface. And down here where you would normally get a bunch of surface abnormalities, uh, we are handling this surface quite well. So I think this is a beautiful loft, especially compared to other platforms that might not process this quite as well. Um, and I don't need a guide curve to tell me to start or end normal to the profile because that's built in with this functionality. You also have this in SolidWorks. In fact, SolidWorks Loft has this in both solid and surface. SolidWorks uh, Surface Loft has that as well. On top of that, Boundary has that option for every individual sketch profile, which is a huge advantage. So I was able to generate the surface without a, pro without a problem in Onshape. If we try the same thing in X-Design, uh, there, there's just a few different ways that this identifies the loft, right? First off, we'll go to Features, actually Surfaces, and I'll choose the Surface Loft here. Uh, interestingly enough, I can do this from Features as well if I choose Loft down here. This has, you know, Additive, uh, Reductive, or New. It creates a new uh, body all by itself. So they've kind of consolidated this from the SolidWorks uh, way of doing things where you have a Surface tab and a Features tab. Uh, and you can also, in one go, either do Solid, Thin, or Surface. I see this as a huge improvement from the SolidWorks uh, interface. This, I, I feel, is way more efficient way of doing things, and it makes a lot of sense. It's also quite reminiscent of the way Onshape has uh, organized things as well. So if we do an additive surface, and uh, if I select sections to loft between, right, I can select this little guy down here, and we're actually selecting that entire sketch, even though it doesn't look selected. Um, I come down here and try to select a sketch down here, and we get an error, right? We have a cusp. Um, let's see if we can fix this, maybe tangent. Um, if we go with ratio, there we go. So we've got something generated with the ratio uh, that is not looking like a realistic surface. <laughs> In fact, if I, yeah, so that's not useful. Um, it could be user error. Let's go back to coupling and try tangency or curvature. Maybe go back to vertices. Maybe I'll choose this arc over here. If I add a spline curve here, that doesn't seem to help. Well, but you get the idea that uh, there's uh, some fundamental differences in the uh, way that you select things in X-Design versus other platforms like Onshape or SolidWorks. So those are some of the differences uh, between X-Design and some of the other options, as well as uh, just general lofting and surfacing in X-Design. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.